All right, in this particular example, we're going to look at the Sapphire plugin's lens flare instead of Nuke, and we're going to take a look at the masking abilities of the lens flare uh, with both a black and white mask and a colored mask to do some cool different things with the lens flare. Uh, I just want to go ahead and start by showing you my source clip and my mask. So for my source clip, obviously you can see I have this gentleman uh, shot over a green screen, and I also have a black and white cutout mask of him made. And we're going to use these two clips to uh, determine the position and appearance of a lens flare as we composite it over this guy. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and load my Sapphire Plugins Lens Flare. So I'm going to click over here, go to my lighting family, and click on the Lens Flare. And uh, I'll go ahead and connect the background input over the uh, into the image here. So we've got that connected, and then we'll look at the output. So you can see what it's done is it's rendered a nice lens flare, and it's rendered him directly over the guy. So it's a very nice lens flare, but there's no interactivity. So as I move it over on top of him, uh, it just stays the same color throughout the entire shot. Um, one of the things that we've got with, with the lens flare is the ability to add a mask input. So I'm going to show you that in one sec, but first I want to point out some of the different controls inside the lens flare itself. Um, obviously I've been playing around with the on-screen widget, so you can use that to drag and move the center point at any time. And you can see as I move the center point, it's also tracking this hotspot with it too. But I've got this other crosshair widget here, and I can use this to go ahead and move the pivot point independently. So I can start to move that around. And in fact, if I want to turn off the pivot point entirely, in my plugin controls over here, I can scroll all the way to the bottom. I've got these other options, and I can look at other brightness, and I can set the other brightness to zero, and that's going to eliminate the, uh, the pivot point entirely. So I'll click Enter here, and you see that any brightness in my pivot point is gone. So you have both separate controls for the hotspot and rays, as well as the, uh, the external uh, pivot point. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back to 1. So we've got our pivot point again. Uh, most of the controls for the lens flares are pretty straightforward. Uh, where there are quite a few different lenses you can choose from. I believe it's over 20 at this point. I want to show you just at the very top. There's the lens option, so I go to this, and there's a pull-down menu, and I've got all these different lenses I can choose from, all pretty intricate in their design. We'll zoom back out and just take a look at some of the other lenses here. We have a 35mm Prime. Uh, the Anamorphic Blue is a pretty cool one, uh, as well as some of the newer ones we've added are the Chroma Rings and the Chroma Arcs. So I go ahead and grab the Chroma Arcs, and as I move this around, the hotspot, you'll see how the Chroma Ring uh, grows and shrinks as you move that around. Um, with the with the hotspot. Um, one of the parameters that's maybe not quite as obvious with the lens flare is this one called uh, rays number scale and that's on in the rays control and what that does is control the total number of rays coming out of the center point. So as I start to take that up you'll see it's adding more and more rays from the center point. I can also make those rays longer by adjusting the rays length. Um, whoop, let me show you the rays length again. So I can go ahead and adjust the rays length and if I want to go ahead and eliminate all the rays and just look at the hotspot, I can just go back to my rays number scale and set that to zero. So I'll go ahead and move over here, set that to zero. And as we zoom back out, you'll see there's nothing but the hotspot um, with the lens flare. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reset these now. I'm going to go to reset this, uh, right click on my lens flare option and set knobs to default. So now I've got my basic 35, uh, sorry, 50, 300 millimeter zoom lens flare. And I want to give it a little bit of interactivity with the scene here. I want to actually use a secondary input to create an occlusion pass. So as I showed you earlier, we have this black and white mask here. And I'm going to connect that to my mask input. So I've got a nice mask input down here. I'm just going to drag and connect that. So what I've done now is uh, I've set the mask. And it's just a black and white mask. And so the color now uh, up from the mask is going to multiply with the color hotspot of the lens flare. There are different options for the, for the way you use your mask. Uh, by default, it's color. You can also use the luminance or the alpha channel. Here, for this example, we're just going to use color. And you can see now this hotspot of the lens flare is just multiplying with whatever your mask color is. So as we move it around here, it's all white. It's just going to come through uh, clean as our mask in this area is all white. But as we start to move it behind his head, it's actually going to fade out like it's going behind him because of this black area of the mask. So it's a, a pretty basic uh, setup, but really, really useful if you want to have an occlusion pass. Just use a straight black and white mask and leave the mask type uh, setting as default at color, and then you can actually have a little more control over how the lens flare appears interactively with the scene. So that's just working with the black and white mask. If we want to go ahead and use a color mask, there's some cool things we can do as well uh, with the exact same idea. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this source here and um, show you how this works. Uh, we've just got a nice clip of stained glass here. It's got a lot of nice color to it. This is actually shot by one of our engineers over in Europe. It's a really pretty scene. Now if we go ahead and uh, just connect a lens flare to our background input here, 
you can see, much like the uh, first example, it's just rendering the lens flare over the image. There's no interactivity with it. So as I have the lens flare over black um, or over the different color parts of the image, it's just it's giving you the, the lens flare um, straight with, with no sort of color adjustments to it. So what I can go ahead and do now is actually use that mat, uh, mask input, which I was showing you before, and I can connect that directly to my source as well. So I'm using my source for both my background and my mask input. Now as I do this, you can see it's actually picking up all the different highlights of all the different colors here. So as we move it over the, the orange or the red, you're picking up all these different cool colors because it's using both the uh, our input clip as a, both a background to composite the lens flare over and as a mask to draw the color from. So it's some very nice uh, different looks you've got there uh, with, a, with one simple clip and a sapphire lens flare. So the mask input you can see is, uh, is very useful.